Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Aptamers in Drug Development, From Biomarker Discovery to Targeted Drug Delivery to Small Molecule Drug Detection, presented by Dr. Bill Jackson, Founder and Chief Scientist, Base Pair Biotechnologies. My name is Xavier Gutierrez, and I will be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Now, before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want during the presentation. Simply click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email following the presentation. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're experiencing a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Jackson. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Thank you, Xavier. Um, as mentioned, my name is Bill Jackson. I'm, I'm founder and chief scientist of Base Pair Biotechnologies. Uh, the title of today's talk is Aptamers in Drug Development, Biomarker Dis Discovery, Targeted Drug Delivery, and Small, Mo Small Molecule Drug Detection. Um, in this talk, I have just a few brief slides on aptamers themselves, and then I'll jump right into aptamers in drug development. So just what is an aptamer? The term aptamer simply means a part that fits. Aptamers are typically small and interact in all the same ways most biomolecules interact. Van der Waals interactions, hydrogen bonding, salt bridges, high stacking, et cetera. And as I will explain, aptamers are selected by an in vitro process from large combinatorial libraries of over 10 to the 15th single-stranded nucleic acids. So how does one make an aptamer? Well, there are numerous variations, but the basic steps are referred to as selects and are as follows. In step one, one immobilizes the target to a solid support, then binds the aptamer library and washes away the vast majority that are non-binders. In step two, the rare binders are eluted and collected. In step three, the eluted fraction of nucleic acids is then amplified by, by the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. The entire process is then repeated, typically for 10 to 15 rounds under increasing uh, stringency. <clears throat> so let's put some numbers around the larger workflow as it's typically performed at base pair. At base pair, we begin with some of the largest libraries we're aware of libraries containing over 10 to the 15th candidate sequences or a million billion different candidates. A select strategy is then performed under carefully defined conditions and we use proprietary methods to monitor the diversity of the library. By the end of selects, the library is typically converged to about a million unique sequences, representing a billion fold reduction in sequence diversity. We then use bioinformatics looking at a number of attributes in order to cluster or condense those sequences down another three orders of magnitude to about a thousand candidates. For most part, targets such as peptides and proteins, we can then make use of DNA microarrays as a high throughput screening tool to further narrow the candidates to just tens of candidates. Then, depending on the customer needs or applications, we typically perform some type of functional screening on usually two to 20 aptamers. So to recap, in a matter of weeks, we go from 10 to the 15th candidates to just a handful of validated binders or aptamers. Aptamers offer multiple advantages over antibodies in a wide variety of contexts. First, aptamers are less than one-tenth the size of antibodies. So sterically, they're better able to access tissues and tight spaces, spaces on cell sur surfaces, both in vivo for drug delivery, for example, and in vitro in tissue histology. Second, selects itself is an in vitro process. So unlike conventional antibody production, aptamers can be selected to bind small molecules that are often non-immunogenic or simply too toxic for successful antibody production. 
Aptimers can be selected in virtually any background matrix. At base pair, we've selected aptimers in saliva, urine, fecal extracts, seawater, horse urine for detection of doping agents and racehorses, and even mosquito saliva. Third, <clears throat> unlike protein-based antibodies or enzymes, aptimers are extremely stable. They can be lyophilized and go immediately back into solution. They readily refold and they're not temperature sensitive, so they can be deployed in hot, austere environments for point of care tests. Aptimers are readily modified. Even during synthesis, many chemical modifications can be incorporated for enhanced binding. In vivo stability and detection can also be improved. Common modifications include fluorophores and quenchers, attachment chemistries such as thiols, amines, biotins, or even click chemistries. Whereas antibody label strategies, antibody labeling strategies almost always result in a distribution of labels through multiple lysines, for example, aptimers can be synthesized with a precisely defined degree of labeling. The result is that aptimers can enable much more consistency and control. Fourth, aptimers are produced by well understood, very mature chemical synthesis technology. So as, there is literally zero batch to batch variability in their production. They can be readily synthesized under GMP controls and res resupplied indefinitely. For aptimers and drug discovery. The unique characteristics and advantages of aptimers are being tested throughout the drug discovery process. From the identification of new targets to the use of aptimers as direct therapeutics themselves, conjugates for targeted drug delivery and agents for enhanced detection and monitoring Aptimers are creating new possibilities in drug development. In the following slides, we'll move through the various stages in the drug development process and offer some potential advantages and published results generated with aptimers. <clears throat> Let's start with target discovery. Aptimers can be selected for binding to specific cells of interest without prior identification or isolation of a specific cell surface target. The SELECT process is completed with five cells of interest in this scenario, perhaps a cancer cell line, virally infected cells, or other phenotypic cell type. Negative or subtractive selection is used to remove aptimers that bind normal cells or similar cell lines. Aptimers selected for the cells of interest can then be directly used in diagnostic or therapeutic applications. Taking this a step further, and perhaps of even more utility is that novel unknown biomarkers can be identified using these same aptimers. To accomplish, accomplish this, one simply immobilizes newly discovered aptimers on magnetic beads, for example, incubates either whole cells or a membrane protein preparation with the magnetic beads, and then isolate and pollute proteins for identification by 2D gels or mass spectrometry. As a public, uh, published example, Zhu et al. at Lanzhou University in China used cell selects to identify a biomarker for early stage gastric cancer. Following cell selects, a newly identified aptimer was found to bind peroxyredoxin-4, which was confirmed to, confirmed to be upregulated up in early stage gastric ch cancer by ELISA. A growing number of aptimers are being considered as direct therapeutic agents. Aptimer therapeutics offer several advantages over antibodies. One, chemical synthesis eliminates concern over cell culture derived contaminants and endotoxins associated with bioprocessing and simplifies the regulatory process. Small aptimer size helps facilitate entry into tissues and cells. Some aptimers have penetrated the blood brain barrier, enabling treatment of even neurological disorders. Aptimers are generally non-immunogenic. Reduced in immunogenicity, toxicity enables higher doses of drugs, of drug, and improved drug performance with fewer side effects. Finally, aptimers are easily conjugated for in vitro and in vivo detection during clinical trials. Modifications can be made to protect against nuclease degradation. Pegylation can be readily varied 
for controlled renal, renal clearance, and even modifications such as cholesterol have been added to improve cellular uptake or crossing of the BBB or blood-brain barrier. While Macogen is the only aptamer-based drug approved by the US FDA, many others are in various stages of preclinical and clinical trials. This table gives just a sampling, including aptamers for the treatment of various cancers, macular dege degeneration, and pain management. To focus on a specific example, <clears throat> Researchers in Spain have investigated TLR4 blocking DNA aptamers in an animal model for stroke treatment. While stroke treatment with tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA, is a valid option in only about 5% of cases, TLR4 blocking aptamers are a promising non-toxic alternative. In this study, imaging showed aptamer presence in both the blood and the brain, and the aptamer showed no toxic effects on tissues or organs. In vivo studies involving mice and rats subjected to permanent middle cerebral artery occlusion, the TLR4 blocking aptamer reduced ischemic brain injury when administered four or six hours after an injury, which is the typical time frame for administration of stroke treatment. Continued protective effects were observed at the final 21 day time point in the study. Other therapeutic aptamers. In our own development effort here at BasePair, we've teamed with Dr. Michelle Gillier at the University Center Hospital of Wadois, or CHOV in Lausanne, Switzerland, to develop therapeutic aptamers that bind the cationic peptide LL37. Dr. Gillier's high profile work on the role of LL37 in psoriasis has been published in journals such as Nature and the Journal of Experimental Medicine. BasePair has generated aptamers with nanomolar affinity to LL37, and together our collaboration has demonstrated that the aptamer co-located co with LL37 under the skin with the potential to break the inflammatory cycle of self-DNA rec recognition that can lead to psoriasis. <clears throat> On another note, researchers in China have reported preliminary results for selective DNA aptamer to alpha synuclein a protein in neurons that has been implicated in the progression of Parkinson's disease. Fluorescence imaging and fax analysis confirmed entry of an aptamer KD peptide complex into neuroblastoma cells. And the team confirmed that aptamer uptake did not cause cytotoxicity. In vitro, the aptamer inhibited alpha synuclein aggregation in association with mitochondria. The aptamer also promoted intracellular alpha synuclein degradation degradation and preserve neuronal viability in the presence of alka synuclein over expression. Aptamer drug conjugates can be used to also deliver drugs to target cells. Aptamers can be selected to bind with a high degree of specificity to cell surfaces. D directed delivery of drug compounds can limit off-target effects and increased delivery to target cells can lower the required do dosage and improve efficacy. Targeted aptamer binding can enable entry into cells or across the blood-brain barrier. Aptamers are also non-immunogenic, and they can be conjugated without affecting selective binding, enabling modifications to improve stability or labeling to assess aptamer drug delivery. As another example, um, Dr. Michael Fomaluk's lab in Germany has selected aptamers to the hepatocyte growth factor receptor, CMET, for targeted delivery of the chemotherapy drug doxorubicin to tumor cells. In this multifaceted approach, the group has created a self-assembling nanoparticle with multi mul <coughs> excuse me, multiple functions, including one, an aptamer with specific affinity for the CMET biomarker, to confer specificity of the particle to cancer cells, two, non-covalent drug packaging of doxorubicin, and three, photocontrolled drug release. The team confirmed selective targeting, effective cell uptake, and triggered release of the drug through both imaging and flow cytometry. CMET targeting was shown to facilitate cellular uptake, and the cellular uptake was temp temperature sensitive, 
suggesting entry by endocytosis of the nanoparticle construct. Also in the study, aptamer lipidization increased serum stability more than tenfold. Lipidized aptamers were stable in serum for up to 72 hours, and nanoconstructs were stable for 14 to 18 hours in serum. Finally, in demonstrating the utility of localized photo activation, the brief appli application of low-intensity UV radiation produced 80% mortality in, in targeted non-small cell lungs, cancer cells, in just eight hours. Separately, a team of researchers from Italy and Luxembourg developed an aptamer drug construct that penetrates the blood-brain barrier for the treatment of glioblastoma. In this example, platelet-derived growth factor receptor beta is overexpressed on tumorigenic glioblastoma cells, stem cells, and resistant glioblastomas. Therefore, an anti-PDGFR receptor beta aptamer was selected for targeting. Drug was entrapped in the lipophilic portion of a biodegradable nanoparticle construct. RNA aptamer to PDGFR beta was then conjugated to the PMPs or the polymeric nanoparticles. Aptamer PMPs crossed the blood-brain barrier and accumulated at the tumor site. In terms of stability, researchers observed a significant increase in tumor inf infiltration at four hours versus two hours post-injection, but later time points were not included. And it, with respect to activity, Entrapment of a drug conjugate with low cell solubility in the PNPs increased its bioavailability, resulting in a thousand-fold increase in cytotoxicity compared to the free drug. In vivo studies then demonstrated specific glioblastoma tumor uptake and reduction in tumor marketer expression in cancer-bearing mice following five days of daily intravenous administration. Aptamers to small molecule drugs. Switching gears and, somewhat amazingly, for the first time last year, more people died from opioid-related drug overdoses in the U.S. than did in car wrecks. The most helpless victims in this new epidemic are babies born to opioid-using mothers. To help address these problems, base pairs developed aptamers to a number of opioids and their primary urinary metabolites. And in conjunction with Vanderbilt University, very sensitive assays using a technology called backscattering interferometry are being developed. In addition to a number of aptamers to opioids and their metabolites, base pair has developed aptamers specific to numerous other small molecule drugs, including ampicillin, tetracycline, the frontline HIV drug, tenofovir, several, several herbicides and pesticides, and THC. What is the relevance of that? Aptamer labeling and the selection of aptamers to small molecule drugs and drug metabolites creates new possibilities in the study of drug metabolism. Fluorescence labeling can be used to assess distribution of therapeutic aptamers and aptamer drug conjugate, conjugates. Aptamers to small molecule drugs can be labeled or complexed for in vivo imaging and assessment of drug distribution in the body. Aptamer drug conjugates can be used to reduce required dosing Aptamers to small molecule drugs can be developed for assessment of circulating drug levels via biosensors or aptamer-based assays. And assays or biosensors based on aptamers to drug metabolites can be developed to measure metabolites in urine and monitor drug clearance. And I'll be showing some of our data towards this goal later in the talk. So let's talk about uh, distribution. A group in China has developed an aptamer liposome drug vehicle delivery system to reduce the off-target effects of doxorubicin. They used a conventional select against uh, a select process against recombinant HER3 protein to generate aptamer candidates, and then the best candidate was incorporated on the surface of liposomes carrying the drug for target, targeted delivery of doxorubicin to HER3 expressing tumor cells. An aptamer liposome quantum dot conjugate with similar size and potential to the aptamer liposome docs conjugate was injected to assess in vivo drug distribution. 
imaging with the photo shown at right showed targeted binding at the tumor site. And study of sacrificed subjects confirmed increased accumulation of doxorubicin in tumor tissues in the aptamer group versus the non-aptamer group. With respect to toxicity, analysis of ex vivo organs showed significant and heart liver damage in the dox only group, as expected, reduced damage in the liposome dox group, and no damage in the aptamer liposome dox group. Very promisingly, 36 days post-therapy, survival was 3% in the DOCS-only group, excuse me, 0% in the DOCS-only group, 40% in the DOCSosome liposome group, and 100% survivability in the aptamer liposome doxorubicin group. Reducing dosing with aptamers. Researching, researchers from Harvard, US, UCSB, North Carolina State and Stanford developed an aptamer directed system for targeted deriv delivery of doxorubicin and camptothecin to nucleolin, ex nucleolin expressing tumor cells. In this work, a peptide carrier was engineered to carry precise molar ratios of dox and CPT for combination drug therapy. This peptide drug carrier was then conjugated to an aptamer against nucleolin to confirm tumor specificity to the construct. The team observed in vivo efficacy of the aptamer drug complex at 20 to 30 fold below the maximum tolerated dose or MTV of the free drugs, greatly reducing the risk of off-target effects. No changes in body weight or signs of toxicity to major organs were observed. And it was confirmed that the aptamer conjugate entered cells via nucleolin mediated into cytosis. Finally, the aptamer drug conjugate showed a 58% reduction in tumor size versus co-administration of, of DOX and CPT alone. Imaging with aptamers. Aptamers offer several key advantages for in vivo and in vitro imaging. Small aptamer size offers enhanced penetration of tumor tissue and access to surface targets. Aptamers are non-immunogenic, so there's no interference with processes being studied or perturbation of the immune system. Aptamers can be labeled, labeled with a wide range of molecules with no loss of selectivity or function. And several aptamer modifications are commonly used, such as pegylation to delay renal clearance and extend stability in vivo. As an example, research, researchers in uh, China used a DNA aptamer to EPCAM to identify colon and rectal cancer tissue. Psi-3 labeled aptamer generated strong fluorescence for frozen and deparaffinized colon and rectal cancer tissue, but only weak fluorescence for normal tissue. Direct labeling of the aptamer showed similar results to antibody detection with a secondary antibody. While two different antibodies were required to stain intracellular and extracellular EPCAM, the aptamer stain both. Aptamers have also been used to selectively stain fresh, unprocessed lung adenocarcinoma tissue without staining fresh, normal lung tissue. More on imaging, researchers at Fudan University in China recently selected an aptamer to GPC3, a cell surface protein that is highly expressed in hepatocellular carcinoma or HCC tissue, the most common type of liver cancer. Aptamers <clears throat> labeled with Alexafluor 750 were shown to selectively target GPC plus, GPC3 positive um, HCC cells versus an A549 lung cancer cell in vitro. In vivo, experimental and control mice showed similar levels of fluorescence in major organs, but the experimental group showed elevated levels of fluorescence at the tumor site, showing successful aptamer-specific targeting. With respect to activity, the average, average fluorescence intensities were approximately 20 to 30 percent higher ex vivo compared with in vivo imaging, but the results showed strong correlation with a correlation coefficient of 0.968. Data also show that selective aptamers can be used to detect subcutaneous tumors via near IR fluorescence imaging, making it possible to monitor tumor response in an animal model in vivo without sacrificing the animal.
aptamer targeting and magnetic resonance and imaging. Somewhat similarly, researchers at Jiangsu University in China selected an aptamer against hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha, HIF1-alpha, for enhanced imaging of hypoxia-induced cancer stem cells. HIF1-alpha is believed to be involved in cancer metastasis, therapy resistance, and tumor recurrence. The biocompatible aptamer nanoparticles used in the study successfully targeted cancer cells in hypoxic re regions and significantly enhanced signal and contrast in M MRI imaging. With respect to toxicity, histopathological examination of major organs showed no toxic effects from the nanoparticles. PEG and manganese modified magnetic nanoparticles were bound to the HIF 1-alpha aptamer and evaluated via MRI both in vitro and in vivo. In vitro, imaging of two different pancreatic carcin carcinoma cell lines showed a seven-fold increase in signal with aptamer targeting, and in vivo imaging of a xenographed mouse model showed three-and-a-half-fold increasing in signal, increase in signal with aptamer targeting. Aptamer-based assays. Aptamers offer a number of advantages and assays for biomarker detection. Aptamers are easily selected for binding to proteins, peptides, non-immunogenic small molecules, toxic compounds, or cells of interest. Aptamers can differentiate between highly similar compounds, and positive and negative selection can be done to help enhance that selectivity. No antibody-related nonspecific binding such as heterophilic antibodies, anti-species antibodies, or other immunological effects related to antibody therapies are found with aptamers. And thermal stability enables field-based detection in a wide variety of climates. Chemical synthesis offers zero batch-to-batch -batch variability, reduced regulatory constraints, and unlimited material supply. So, as an example, researchers at the University of Illinois discovered a lateral flow assay, or LFA, for detection of cortisol in sweat. Cortisol is a small 30, 362 Dalton steroid horm hormone that is elevated in response to stress. In the study, a 40 mer DNA aptamer selected for, selected for cortisol was used in the LFA. Detection was based on the blocking of gold nanoparticles by anti-cortisol aptamers. In the presence of cortisol, aptamers bind, in the presence of cortisol, aptamers bind cortisol and are released from the surface of the nanoparticles. The gold nanoparticles are then available to bind cystamine at the positive test line downstream along the lateral flow strip. In terms of performance, the lower limit of detection of the cortisol LFA was one nanogram per mil, which is well below the normal range of eight to 140 nanograms per mil. Color intensity at the test line also increased in a dose-dependent manner. Along with that theme, biosensors produce a change in detectable signal upon reversible interaction with the target of interest in the biological sample. The small size of capture aptamers enables binding events to take place close to the biosensor surface for enhanced detection. Aptamers have been widely have been successfully immobilized on a wide range of materials and labeled with a wide range of signaling, signaling molecules without loss of selectivity or affinity. Aptamer stability and refolding enables biosensor regeneration, and the ability to select aptamers that bind small molecule drugs and drug metabolites in complex samples makes aptamer-based biosensors a particularly useful platform for the study of pharmacokinetics and drug monitoring, or PKPD studies. At base pair, we have tested aptamers to a number of small molecule targets, including tenofovir, the frontline HIV drug, several antibiotics and antifungals, and the opioid fentanyl. We are currently using commercially available screen printed electrodes and square wave voltammetry to conduct these studies. Some of the promises of electrochemical sensing are that optics-free detection for, for direct readout in whole blood or other highly complex 
sample matrices that are light scattering can be performed. With electrochemical sensing, nanomolar detection in less than two minutes is, a, is feasible with just under 100 microliters of sample. And sensors can be regenerated for repeated use. So here's a typical square wave voltammetry result for our tenofovir aptamer as performed at base pair. As one can see, there's a dose response to the target in which the electrode current is increased. We estimate that the limited detection of this assay platform is somewhere between one and 10 nanomolar, which agrees with several independent publications using electrochemical sensing and base pair same aptamer to tenofovir. And here's a plot of that dose response with the electrode current uh, plotted in microamps versus concentration and showing a linear R squared fit of almost uh, 0.95. So electrochemical aptamer biosensors offer the potential to reversibly and in real time measure the actual drug concentration in a near patient setting or even in vivo. Um, as an example application, critically injured soldiers in the field often metabolize antibiotics and antifungals at much different rates than the un uninjured. BasePair is collaborating on a DARPA-funded project to develop a multiplex biosensor for on-site antibiotic and antifungal drug monitoring and individual dosing for the military. We have selected DNA aptamers to the small molecule antibiotics, amphotericin, meropenem, and the antifungal voriconosol. Lead aptamer candidates are being evaluated in an electrochemical sensing platform at base pair, and the top aptamer candidates will be transferred to our collaborators for multiplex biosensor development. Well, uh, time passed fast, but thank you for your time and attention. And uh, we ask that you please leave your feedback and please reach out to BasePair if you have any questions about aptamers in general or aptamer-based uh, application development. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, for that informative presentation. I would also like to thank Labroots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through May of 2019. As a final reminder, our speaker will follow up with any questions you've submitted via email. And that's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.